Okay, here's another one that you can get from the old CD bookshop at gmail.com or the same name is on eBay without the Gmail appendage. This is also in verse. See, Revelation, they call it a paraphrase because it's not the authorized version. But they see, it says in verse. This one's done by Reverend T.P. Briggs. Okay, with an introduction by somebody with some initials after his name. Part of Brown University. That's reasonably respectable, right? And look at the year, 1892. And look what it's on, Revelation. Now, I have already done the meter in Revelation 1. That's been up in Vimeo for a while now. Okay? You can download it yourself as John Dateline Meters dot PDF and see the Greek yourself for this. Okay, I haven't abstracted all the meter in Revelation, but I did do the first chapter of each book of the New Testament, including Revelation. Because I wanted to prove that yes, they use sevening meter in order to tell you when they wrote. And John is telling you pretty specifically when he wrote Revelation. In 88 AD, which, you know, later history will later confirm, oh, that's the year that, yes, the mission really was persecuting Jews. Not Christians. Jews. Even Jews in his own, and his own home household. Okay? And John is what? A Jew. So John is what? On Patmos, but not necessarily because of Domitian, but because it became fashionable to persecute Jews if Domitian was doing it. You get that? You know, like with Donald Trump, it's become fashionable to be anti-Semitic because Donald Trump is encouraging the anti-Semites to vote for him. So now all kinds of Jews are getting death threats from the anti-Semites all over journalism land. Yeah, well, what do you think happened during the time of Domitian when he turned anti-Semitic? That's why John's in Patmos. It's not 96 AD, it's 88. And he dates his own text. So I wanted to see, oh wow, I just found this in this other piece, which is a list of New Testaments. And you can just ask for it. Revelation paraphrase PDF. The old CD bookshop will know which one it is. And they'll know what CD to give you. It's, a, it's actually in the New Testament's CD. Okay, I can't dislodge it now to tell you the actual title because I am using it to show you this on screen. But you'll see this is in 1892, okay? So in 1892, it was still fashionable to count the actual words. This time we're looking at the Greek. To count the syllables. And guess what? That's what this boy is doing. He's not counting. I don't agree with his counts, but I can tell that's what he's doing. See? Oh, yeah. Get get past this two verbose inter. Here we go. Revelation chapter one. Okay. The revelation of our Lord, which God the Father gave to him. Sixteen syllables. It is sixteen syllables in the Greek. You could argue it was fifteen. But the point is, I can tell he's caught, he's counting the Greek syllables. To show to all his watchful saints the things which shortly must be done. That's another 16. The Greek is not 16, the Greek is 15. For sure the Greek is 15. You cannot make the Greek be 16. But because this is 16, he wants this to be 16. He didn't have to translate it so it's 16. He could make it 15, I did. You just, instead of saying shortly, just say soon, because that's what take means. Suddenly without warning is really what it means, but that's too many words. So just soon. Okay, we use that same expression in English. Oh, it'll happen soon. Soon meaning when. It's, it's vague, right? That's not really what take means in Greek. It means suddenly without warning, surprise attack. But you can't use all those words if you're trying to translate it as verse. But if he had used soon, instead of shortly, 
then he would have equaled the Greek syllables, but he didn't want to do that because this is 16, so he wants this to be 16. Okay, I'd argue that he could make this be 15 and therefore this be 15, but he didn't choose to do it that way. But notice, I know what he did. I know what syllables he counted, and he was counting the Greek syllables. Are you getting the point here? What Brown has been saying, which nobody seems to know, was in fact commonly known. This guy's writing a book. You know, in those days, you wrote a book, you need to make money on it, and how many people are going to want to buy that book? Well, there has to be a market for it, doesn't there? Or the publisher isn't going to want to publish it. See, this was published. Copyright 19, 1892 by James Earl. Okay? And the publisher is James Earl. Well, he ain't going to stay in business very long if he doesn't have a market for his product. So what does that tell you? People wanted to see this. They wanted you to count the syllables in the Greek this time. And this is Revelation, which is a prophecy. It is not a poem. Okay? It's not a poem. And they have to call it a paraphrase because it's not the original authorized version in English. So they have to call it a paraphrase. But it's not really a paraphrase. It's a pretty literal translation. Because look, honey, I dare you not to notice. You go look at the Greek if you know how to read it. That's pretty, pretty good. Pretty good literal translation. Shortly is not what I would use as the right word. For reasons given but this is pretty literal okay it's not in quite the same order as the Greek words but it's got the same syllable counts that's about as much as you can hold for so here honey see see it's not just brain out now this was a popular thing to do or this guy couldn't sell his book in 1892 so what happened to the scholars in the 20th century. Hmm? I think I've made my point clear. They do know this meter exists. They don't know very much about it. But they knew enough that, ooh, we should count the same syllables the way they did in the original Bible. Yeah. And they even wrote books that they published about it. So what I'm telling you is a recovery of lost information that is not, like, out there in the two leaves. Okay? Here's your proof. I've been giving you proof. You want more proof? If I find it and it's useful, I'll give it.